Hello YouTube. Uh, this video is about Ukraine's paranormal phenomenon. Actually about some aspects. Because there is really so much to demonstrate to the world when it comes to Ukraine and paranormal phenomena. There will be more videos about certain specific uh, phenomenon. And I have already produced some before. About UFOs, about time travel and so forth as it pertains to Ukraine. You will find them in the playlist Paranormal Ukraine. Today I want to present a background of such phenomena uh, because of the war that Russia has unleashed against Ukraine. I don't know what's going to be left when this war is over. And uh, so I, I want to introduce people to, to Ukrainian paranormal phenomena and some of the historical aspects. So there is memory of it. And hopefully, Ukrainians will be able to go back to their daily, everyday activities and so forth when all of this is over, and they win. I have been active in this uh, research since the early 1990s. Actually, when the USSR disintegrated and free independent Ukraine came up from the ruins. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm proud. I was an honorary member of the Poltava UFO Society. I have been in touch with Ukrainian writers and ufologists like Kavshun, Krapiva, Rubtsov, Arkhipov and others. Uh, some of my articles have been published in Ukrainian too and Russian in Ukraine. Well, today also I want to share information of Yaroslav Vasilyevich Sochka, who was born in 1977 in the village of Malaya Rostoka in the Transcarpathian region. He's a Ukrainian ufologist, researcher of paranormal and parapsychological, parapsychological phenomena. And in 1998, he founded the ufological society UFODOS. Um, he's the author of numerous publications and studies on the topic of anomalous phenomena, including cryptozoology, poltergeist, and so forth. And, um, you, you know, of course, UFO uh, topics like ancient aliens in Ukraine and so forth. Now, my beautiful wife is from Western Ukraine, where Sochka resides. Um, and while I am from Kiev, the ancient city with its secrets and mysteries, and I have talked about Kiev, and I'll tell more, tell you more, because its past is somewhat shrouded in interesting um, enigmas. And as a, as a youngster, I used to study the tunnels of Kiev and I used to spend time in the hills of the old Padol, the suburb of uh, Kiev. And I used to find a lot of interesting artifacts. Anyway, UFOs have been appearing over Ukrainian lands for a long time. Today, actually before today, but previously they have been seen in every region of the country. And before the latest Russian invasion, uh, there have been cases that included alien UFO pilots, and contact with them. Since the late 1980s, UFO research movement uh, has been forming in Ukraine, numbering thousands of scientists and um, enthusiastic researchers. The UFO phenomenon has been a social phenomenon and it attracted attention. And UFO, UFO field, Ukraine has been quite active in it. Um, but the UFO phenomenon is only a small part of the anomalous and paranormal phenomena that amaze the imagination of the Ukrainian people. But of course, the phenomenon is one of the most mysterious and incredible. Besides, its solution is extremely important for modern natural science. Perhaps we are on the verge of recognizing the possibility of visitation of our planet by inhabitants of other worlds. And this, as you understand, will be the greatest discovery of all times. But let's look at the celestial chronicles. Uh, you know, it, otherwise it's a, it's a difficult matter to call them anything else. In the old Rus chronicles, um, here is the reference in the ancient, to the ancient South Slavic state. Let me explain. The Kiev or Kievan Rus, or Rus as I prefer to call it, was the, it was the formation of the Kievan state that began in the mid 9th century. Um, there was the role of the Varangians or Vikings in this process, and the name Rus, by which this state came to be known, um, 
you know, it's still a controversy to, to historians. However, it's clear, however, that this formation was connected with the developments in international trade and the prominence of the Dnieper, or even Dnieper route from Baltic to Byzantium, on which Kiev was strategically sited. Trade along this route was controlled by the Varangian merchant warriors, and from their ranks came the progenitors of the Kievan princes, who were, however, soon Slavicized, because it became Slavic. In the early chronicles of the Varangians, uh, themselves were also called Rus, and this corporate name became a territorial designation for the Kievan region, the basic territory of the Rus. Later, by extension, it was applied to the entire territory ruled by the members of the Kievan dynasty. So by the end of the 10th century, the Kievan domain covered a vast area from the edge of the open steppe in Ukraine, as far north as Lake Ladoga, which you, you, you talked a lot about my uh, ufology in my videos, and the upper Volga basin. Now, Kiev reached its uh, height at the reign of Vladimir the Great and his son Yaroslav, his son Yaroslav the Wise. In 1988, Volodymyr adopted Christianity as the religion of his realm and had the inhabitants of Kiev baptized. Rus entered the orbit of Byzantine, later Orthodox Christianity and culture. So, I just wanted to explain to you that this is not the Russia of today, and I, this is not anything against Russia, by the way, historically. It's just a designation, because people in the West don't really know where Ukraine is. Many of them, some do. Nowadays, a lot of people do. Or what's the difference between Russia and Rus and so forth? Now, let's go back to the Chronicles. Many pages in them are devoted to the description of ultimate miracles associated, as a rule, with celestial anomalies. Here is what we read in the chronicle Nestor's tale of the bygone years. In the year 6573, that would be 1065 AD, there was a sign in the west, a great star with rays as if bloody. In the evening, it ascended to the sky after sunset, so it was for seven days. At the same time, a child was thrown into the Setomul. It is believed that this river flowed near Kiev, through the meadows of Abalone, a suburb. Possibly flowed into the Pachina River, this child was pulled out by fishermen in a dragnet and examined until the evening and again thrown into the water, so they threw it back into the water. Here is how the child appearance was described. His face had shameful features and more features that cannot be described because of shame they would cause. At the time of the discovery, it was said that the sun changed too and caused being bright. Actually, it resembled the moon. Before that time, so, um, okay, who was that strange creature under the rays of the bloody star? Perhaps it was a dwarf like extraterrestrial. So, who was this creature, right? Um, with the sun suddenly darkening, and the rays of the blood star very interesting well it reminds me of aliens described in the reports of sightings in the 20th century now the same chronicle nestor narrates further about the whole invasion of unusual aliens that took place in the year 1092 a wonderful miracle appeared in polotsk as hallucination there was a trampling at night, something was moaning in the street, demons were prowling like people. If anyone ventured out of the house, he was immediately invisibly wounded by the demons with illnesses and died from it. Then they began to appear on horses during the day, and they could not be seen themselves, but the horses' hooves were visible. And there was a sign in the sky, like a great circle in the middle of the sky. It should be particularly noted that uh, here, here that the ancient chronicles mentioned the appearance of the heavenly cavalry on the streets of cities more than once. And these chronicles are not related to each other in any way. An interesting detail, all these phenomena were accompanied by a sign a lamp in the sky, a circle in the middle of the sky. 
all this is stridly, strikingly reminis reminiscent of modern harbingers of various kinds of aliens, fireballs, discs, saucers. In a word, what today we refer to as unidentified flying objects or UFOs. Ukrainian mythology, which has its roots in ancient times, in distant prehistoric and pre-Christian times, is very strange in its similar content with the modern experience of encounters with aliens. Assuming that such do occur, ufologists and ancient alien hypothesis proponents pay close attention to a number of mythological creatures called the Div, the Vila, and the Mavkas. Legends depicting their appearance and features often contain details that we find in abundance in modern UFO literature. Let's start with the Div. They fly, they wear silvery clothing. Okay? The memory of this fabulous, incredible creature has been preserved to our time by the words miracle or surprise, like Ukrainian divno. That is something that causes surprise. No one could keep the appearance of the div in their memory, different people even saw it differently. The reviews of him or it agree on one thing. This is a whirlwind, a man shining like lightning, who suddenly appeared on the path of an army going on a campaign to battle and calls for prophecies, sometimes terrible, sometimes favorable. Um, the name itself is of Latin origin, some believe, from the root div, that is to shine. In the word about Igor's regiment, that's an ancient truth chronicle, it says, the div is huddled, he calls at the top of the tree, tells the earth to listen to the unknown. Okay. Let's move on to Vila. That's a Slavic fairy similar to a nymph, female beautiful and with long blonde hair. They fly have a magic rod of vine objects that have been used since the time immemorial to search for underground sources. Today, dowsing deals with such issues. The root veal in modern Russian and Ukrainian has been preserved basically only in surnames, for example, Akilev or Akilenko. Um, the touch of a vila twig can paralyze a person or plunge him or her into lethargic sleep. Mavki. Now, these are the same like mermaids, although they differ from them in this position, they are described as funny and playful creatures. S something like, uh, according to Sochka, like modern Barabashka or Poltergeist. Collector and researcher of Slavic legends and fairy tales of the 19th century, Afanasyev, referring to the stories of Ukrainian peasants, mentions around bald spots or sites of fallen wheat or rye, the so-called crop circles that are registered all over the world, right? And folk tradition connects div, veal, and mavki with crop circles. The peasants of the southern uh, Rus regions, for example, blame, blame mavki for the fallen stems of rye and wheat, claiming that the circles and bald spots or sites appearing in the fields in the morning are places where they dance at night. The classic of Ukrainian literature of the 19th century, Ivan Nechu Levitsky, in the book The View of the Ukrainian People, dating back to 1876, attributes the property of making circles to mermaids. Mermaids love dancing. People say they lured the shepherd to themselves and made a wish for him to play the flute. The shepherd played the whole night and the whole night the mermaids danced. The next day at that site there were circles in the, gla in the, uh, in the grass and where the shepherd played there was a pit. So the mysterious aliens with whom our ancient ancestors fraternized were called the Div, Vil, and Mavki. And if these are really aliens from other wor worlds, then perhaps they are guilty of the mystery of the modern crop circles phenomenon. Now, in the old Rus chronicles and folklore sources, there are descriptions of unusual celestial phenomena and unique events observed by the then inhabitants of the Kievan Rus. 
These descriptions have several common features that cannot be explained if we consider what happened only as ordinary atmospheric or celestial phenomena. The presence of such descriptions in ancient sources can only speak about the close attention of UFOs to Kiev and Rus. Today's Ukraine, which is, as it is known, exists to this day. In the Epatiev Chronicle of the 12th century, it states the following. There was a sign across the Dnieper River, not far from the uh, Kiev uh, area. It flew in the sky like circle of fire and changed direction, and it was in the afternoon. In turn, the Nikon Chronicle of the 15th century reports, on one of the days of the Divine Liturgy, many of the parishioners saw above the Church of the Nativity, high in the sky, how a thin cloud stretched out or how thin smoke poured out. White as frost is pure, shining like the sun. Here then, in the subtlety and brightness of the cloud, they saw the likeness of an image rising to the sky. In the book of Daniel Sviatsky, Astronomical Phenomena in Russian Chronicles, published in St. Petersburg in 1909, um, from where these facts are taken, there is a it contains a description of several phenomena that cannot be meteorites, comets, or optical mir mirage. Here's an excerpt from a letter from the priest of the village of Yorsh, which describes in detail the phenomenon observed in the sky on November 29, 1662. After the sun set in our village and in other villages, Many people saw a terrible sign in the sky. As soon as the sun went down from this place where the sun went down, a large and long star came out and appeared across the sky like lightning, stood for or hovered for about half an hour. The light was indescribable, like a fire many saw in that light, a large image high above people's heads. Then in the place where the image was, as if a cloud appeared cloudy and small. The sky closed and fire began to fall to the ground. Then it rose up in a cloud, and in this cloud there was smoke and noise, like thunder for a long time. The earth was shaking, and houses were shaking, and many people fell to the ground in terror. And all sorts of domestic animals were rushing around in a group, Clutching their mouth with half-eaten food, they raised their heads to the sky and roared as if they were dying. This terrible sign was also observed in the Kirillovsky mon Monastery, 400 kilometers to the west. A star came out and quickly rolled down the sky, and when it did not reach the ground, it stood up like a great fleece, and from it, like lightning, a very bright fire flew out, not unlike an ordinary fire. Everything was illuminated, both inside the buildings and the surrounding area. From the place where the star was, a cloudy uh, cloud appeared as if, as it were, and stretched from it across the sky like a great serpent. Uh, its head on fire and smoke went out of it. There was also noise and thunder, and the fire did not fall to the ground, but went through our monastery. By the way, our forefathers left evidence of heavenly objects, not only in the form of texts, on the miniature of the Radzivil Chronicle, with an illustration to the text about the Vishgorod hunt of the Kiev Prince Vsevolod. The Chronicle reports that when Vsevolod hunted animals, a great serpent fell from the sky and all the people were horrified. At this time the earth trembled, so many heard. The illustration shows a strange semicircular device hanging in the air. In another miniature of the same Chronicle we see a group of people with their hands raised up, pointing to a flying saucer that hovered in the sky and from which pillars of fire directed downward came out. These pillars of fire, in which it is not difficult for contemporaries to recognize the rays of searchlights, are found in chronicle sources repeatedly. So in the life of Saint Theodosius, where it is referring to the search for the choice of the site for the temple of the Most Holy Mother of God of the Kiev Pichersk Lavra, or Kiev Monastery of the Caves, it is said, 
Then a pillar of fire appeared from heaven to earth, and sometimes the rainbow came to this place. Strange celestial objects visited Ukraine in the 19th century quite a lot, and a number of interesting documents on this subject are still stored in the central state archives. And the archival documents in particular describe in detail the events in the middle of the year of 1859, when in Kiev and Volyn provinces there was a UFO invasion. The report of the Radomysl district police officer dated May 19, 1859, testifies that early in the morning on May 18, the peasants of the Radomysl district observed fiery, um, uh, it was a fiery ball, a fiery sphere, um, perceived by ordinary eye, two and a half vershka, that's uh, one vershok is 4.45 centimeters. The body of the object had a tail, also fiery, in the form of a ray of bright purple, with shades of green. The beam length was one and a half arshin, one arshin is 71 centimeters. The flight height of the body was 60 fathoms, meaning one fathom is like 2.1 meters. Then a lot of the same fireballs appeared, some during their flight scattering sparks, disappeared into the air, others scattering in the same way, fell to the ground with a bang, leaving no trace, and some continued on their way. In his report to the authorities, the police officer of Radomyshlitsky rural self-government mentions the following. Phenomena were noticed in one direction near the tract tavern belonging to the village of Kalganovka. One of the meteors fell, obviously resulting in a fire on the roof of the tavern. On that day and almost at the same hour in another village called Chernogorodka of the Vasilkovsky county, local residents witnessed a similar divine miracle. Early in the morning, a rocket launched by some unknown, someone unknown, suddenly appeared over the churchyard. Approaching the temple at high speed, it burned up in the air three yards from the bell tower and did not cause it any harm. The priest of the parish church, Maximovich, reported in detail about this case to Bishop Antony of Chigirinsky, and the case is described in the by the collision secretary Nikolai Terech. The report of the Tarashansky district police officer tells how in May of the same year a fiery meteor appeared in the sky, uh, longish like a snake, which was rushing in the air in the direction from the west to east at an unusual speed, and then exploded with a thunderous blow and fell to the ground. After that, a black liquid layer of mass was found in that place which had an unpleasant smell like sulfur. Don't you think that this last phrase is remarkable? The fact is that based on the data compiled by the UFO commissions that visited the UFO landing sites, it turned out that one of the main smells that objects leave on the Earth's surface is the smell of sulfur. Interesting data is contained in the report of the Skvirsky Zemsky court in the city of Ruzhin. A phosphorus object was seen flying at low altitude with a hum and had the appearance of a lightning. In order not to bore the audience with a long list of archival documents describing the strange events of the distant year of 1859, it is enough to mention the report of Professor Sholovsky to the principal of the Kiev University, Ivan Yakovich Nevkrich, on the proposition of Your Highness, dated May 30 and June 2, 1859, I have the honor to report that the fiery meteors seen in different places in the Kiev and Volyn provinces do not represent anything new, since similar phenomena have been repeatedly observed before and later, we should add. Here is how the famous Ukrainian writer Nechu Levitsky describes the anomalous phenomena once seen by an old peasant. There was a single cloud in the west and a clear sky, all golden with red edges. Above the spire itself, in the middle of the forest, a man stood on a cloud. 
transparent as a fog and seemed to be um, holding his hand to him as if calling the year is 1878 and after some 14 years in 1892 Ukraine again experienced a massive invasion of unidentified objects mysterious airships were flying over the vast territory of the country causing bewilderment of citizens in the newspapers of that time you can find a lot of the most incredible stories these testimonies convince unbiased researchers that the study of ukraine by representatives of other worlds has been going on for more than one millennium moreover heavenly serpents flying ships and unearthly freaks overwhelm not only medieval chronicles but also much older epic and fairy tale plots rooted in the darkness of pagan times for those who are skeptical of such assumptions we can admit that not all of the examples given as well as many others gathering dust on archive shelves are directly related to unidentified flying objects and alleged traces of extraterrestrial technologies in their modern understandings. It is quite difficult to study the past in terms of identifying evidence of the existence of ancient alien visitation. It is easy to get to the so-called dead end, make a mistake, you know, having paid the necessary tribute to the past, the most interesting and at the same time controversial period um, of UFOs we are now moving to the modern era of flying saucers. The birth of ufology in Ukraine falls basically on the last decades of the 20th century. The Socialist Soviet Union, of which Ukraine had no choice but to be a member until 1991, since the year of 1922, while well, the Soviet Union did not allow ideological sabotage, pseudoscience of ufology, to enter the territory of fraternal countries. The prevailing totalitarian regime not only considered UFOs to be an, uh, blasphemy, so to say, but also physically destroyed everything and everything that did not correspond to the dogmas of the only true Marxist-Leninist doctrine. Despite the painful and contradictory process of its development in the country, um, Ukraine, after the end of uh, communist rule, made up for the lost time, uh, time uh, you know, at a rapid pace, so to say. Um, well, and it, Ukrainian ufology was not absent, it just wasn't easy <laughs> to, to, to get to, to, to study. But, you know, let's quickly trace the history of development of ufology in Ukraine, because without knowledge of its origins, it is difficult to assess the further ways of its development in the country. In Kiev in 1980, with the permission of the president of the Academy of Sciences of the USSR, Academician Paton, um, they created a section for the study of anomalous phenomena in the environment, um, the chairman of which was the well-known scientist, a full member of the Academy of Sciences of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, Academician Pisarenko, and the scientific secretary was no other than Kuznetsova. It was during this fertile period, like you're looking at the beginning of 1980s, you know, when the Sietka program was in existence in the Soviet Union for the secret study of UFOs for the army needs and so forth. Anyway, this, at that time in Kiev, the scientific seminars and meetings on the so called UFO issue began to be held regularly. Um, and in Ukraine, they discussed the problem, maybe more openly than in other places. In 1981, actually, there was the so called section, the study of anomalous phenomena in the environment. It was held um, the, in Kiev, was the first Ukrainian Republic, uh, Ukrainian Republic meeting of the study of anomalous phenomena in the environment, at which, in addition to the academician Pisarenko, and corresponding member of the USSR Academy of Sciences, Troitsky, it was attended by 12 doctors of science and 40 candidates of sciences. Please show me something similar in the United States or Western Europe. This occurred under the Soviet rule. I have yet to see a great UFO scientific conference in the United States. 
like that. I've been to some, but where so many scientists are coming together to study the UFO phenomenon and so on. I will not tell you the full story of ufology birth in modern Ukraine. In general, the ufological structure of Ukraine has undergone significant changes. The primary reason for that was political instability in the country. And only by the mid-1990s there was like a revival in UFO research in the in the country a flourish flourishing of full-fledged interest in the problem and not only in public circles but also in the ukrainian military uh, by the order of the minister of defense of ukraine the collection of information about ufos is entrusted to the main hydrometeorological center of the armed forces of ukraine uh, and this was reported uh, in the press by a very interesting person he was the head of the center um, I think uh, Colonel Lunev. The duties of the center also included prompt notification of senior military officials about the phenomenon. The military interest in the UFO issue is natural. Facts of this kind exist and need to be explained. Moreover, the UFOs themselves are interested in military departments <laughs> and facilities. Uh, there was a video of UFO that hovered in 1994 for 1 1.5 hours over one of the military facilities in the south of Ukraine. Two antennas are clearly visible on the round tower and in the square windows uh, there are barely distinguishable silhouettes of humanoids that were approaching the portholes and then moving away from them. To the credit of the military, they never doubted the reality of UFOs and the need to study them in Ukraine. The development of UFO phenomenon promises a new breakthrough in understanding the laws of the universe, a leap in technology, energy, and the terrestrial science in general, it's possible. Among other things, questions of ufology are questions of the universe, the meaning of being, existence, dreams of mankind, and its future. Therefore, a balanced scientific approach is required, based on strict evidence-based argumentation. The greatest delicacy must be observed. It is extremely necessary to integrate the efforts of all teams, as this is required by the enormity and significance of the UFO problem. And UFOlogy requires the combined efforts of scientists and enthusiasts around the world, because the UFO phenomenon is of planetary scale. And I'm glad uh, that uh, before this, this Russian invasion in 2022, the Ukrainian UFOlogists understood this. And despite the economic weaknesses and political um, vicissitudes, I believe the word is, in the country, they remained faithful to their cause. But they believed in the bright future of domestic ufology and as far as possible made their contribution to the study and research of one of the greatest mysteries of nature, the UFO phenomenon. And <clears throat> I bring information from, for example, their site Novosti Ufology, News of Ufology and other places and try to tell you as much as I could. The same was with the Russian ufology too. Now, <clears throat> what will be after the war, I do not know. But I'm in touch with some of the Ukrainian ufologists and I'll bring you their research, as well as specific cases and phenomena recorded in the past few centuries, including the region my beautiful wife is from, the Transcarpathian region, located in the west of Ukraine. It is adjacent to Slovakia, Hungary, and Romania. And there have been a lot of interesting cases. And I shared a photograph of strange uh, stone spheres that have been found in that area. No less strange than the ones that have been found, for example, in South America. So count on me to bring you more stories of Ukrainian paranormal phenomena, ufology, and much more. And if you can support my research, you'll find the links in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel and thank you for your attention.